Danny, a lot to talk about uh, this morning here on the show. I shouldn't even say this morning. Whenever you're listening to the show, we're, of course, we're live with you. No matter how you listen or watch the show, whether it's on our YouTube channel, whether it's on the, the video we send to you, we button it up and send it to people uh, throughout the weekend. And then, I, of course, you get on iTunes, Google Play Store. But there's a lot to talk about um, in terms of the technical nature of this market, where it's potentially headed. Uh, I know you want to talk about um, it's tax season. I, want, I know you want to talk about wash sales. Which doesn't sound uh, interesting when you say it out loud. Hey, I want to talk about wash sales. It sounds like a boring topic, to be honest with you. But uh, the way uh, Danny previewed it for me, and it's actually very interesting. Got some viewer mail um, that we want to answer, and then. But I want to talk real quick. Give. I want to throw the red meat out right at the top of the show for okay. the, for the traders, uh, for the people, because the, the the podcast is long form. So you want the red meat uh, every you know five days a week. We do that market closed videos we send those out five days a week the podcast gives us a little time to elongate topics and discuss uh things that are both applicable actionable and Mm -hmm. uh but real quick i want to show you something that um i picked up on wednesday and uh it's coming to fruition Uh, i came on to fruition uh thursday and and friday that i think as i talked about on wednesday and this first thing here i want to talk about is just the vix futures because you can get some I mean, just not ripping bullish rallies in the market, even though the VIX futures remain inverted. We've been talking about this for three weeks. The VIX futures have been inverted now for this is uh-huh. the third week in a row. Uh-huh. The VIX futures have remained inverted. We've had some massive, massive rallies in there. The thing is, when the VIX futures are inverted, so like, how do you use that piece of information, Tim? That it's, it's, if you get a bull rally, right, doesn't mean it can't turn into something big. It just means that you need to, if they remain inverted after this rally has begun, you, you need <laughs> Danger's to, not over, Will Robinson. That's exactly <laughs> it. And so it's, it's a short-term market, no matter how strongly you feel. You know? And so um, that's, that's one way to use that information. But we always say on the show, it's not one piece of information. Mm-hmm. It's not one. It's not, it's an, we use an amalgamation of information. And so it's not just this one piece in the vacuum that's going to lead you to a decision. And then, so we take the VIX futures to a chart. So we have the inversion. And I, and I was talking like, hey, if you even come close to sniffing, you're, you're almost at 33 here. So if you come close to sniffing the wick, this is a four-hour chart, by the way. Uh, this is, by the way, super freaking bullish chart. Uh, you take out 30, on the VIX. On the VIX futures. Let's make sure the, we, yeah. Well, there's the VIX futures. Right. Well, I just meant that if that chart yeah. is bullish, that's bad for stocks typically yeah, typically typically yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, but i want to make sure people don't don't confuse it i i refer to vix uh, right right no no it was a vix futures chart yeah, i just wanted yeah, to make I sure know. they knew that wasn't a sps s p oh, chart yeah, yeah. or a stock chart this is the vix futures and you're like well what's the difference between the vix futures and the people's vix and, and the people's VIX. well that's what i call the vix <laughs> I know, I know, I know. because that's the one they talk about on on tv and, 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 and the people's vix i feel is manipulated I feel, and when I say manipulated, that people don't, there's no levels to it. Hey, VIX at 20, is that too high or too low? VIX at 34, is that too high or too low? And the people's VIX is just talked about uh, only when markets are in distress and they're looking for a reason. Well, of course the market went down. The VIX, the VIX is up at 34. And it's just nonsense. Like most people don't have a way to use it. Whereas I, I think I have a way to use the people's VIX. I can show it to you if you're really interested. Just Tim at RiverAsset.com or I can do a video on it. doesn't matter to me. Uh, but the VIX futures is the professional hedge, I think. And so, uh, well, that's the, where professionals hedge, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so um, you come up and start sniffing this 34 level. That's, that's the, you're going to see a bunch of things uh, start to happen. And they're all algorithmic. Now let me explain. See, I'm building a site picture, Dan. This is what they call at the Connecticut School of Broadcasting, building your site picture up to give them a wider, to give the audience a wider. Kind of like a movie, the suspense music in the background building in the. Yeah, you know, you know, we've, got a, we've got a little theatrical trailer going on here. And so when I look at, so now we're going to leave the VIX futures and we're going to come to SPX. Okay. And SPX is super interesting. Well, let's go to S&P, SPY. Or S- Making lower lows there. Yeah. You know, I've decided I want S&P futures. Because I, I, I'm going to quote an S&P futures. Okay. So S&P futures have been at two gateways, okay? Uh, those gateways are 4,400 and 4,300, okay? So 100-point mm-hmm. range. That's a big, wide range. Mm-hmm. And someone might say, well, 100 to output. 
that doesn't seem too much. Well, 100 S&P points is much different. One S&P point is almost equivalent to eight Dow points. And so then you can do the math. These are big, wide ranges. And I covered that all in the video. By the way, any of our videos, Dodd's videos, is 21 over 21 videos on the weekends. Hunter's videos, uh, you can find them here at Revere, uh, Revere Asset Daily Market Insight, where an anthology of all of our videos exists. And you can find the video why Thursday is shaping up to be a down day. And so now you can see here on the S&P, so we got the VIX futures inversion. We got the VIX, it was a bullish chart on Wednesday, it just pulled back to the five and the eight. And then you're stymied here at the 4,400 level. Right towards the market close, the, the, the NASDAQ was giving you an indication that it wanted to be lower, okay? Mm -hmm. That's not how the market opened up on Thursday, but it wanted to be lower. And so here's Thursday morning and the S&Ps open up strong. They open up really strong but there was a clue that it would, it would probably roll over, and I'll show you that here in a moment. But this 4,300 level, which is kind of like right here, is super huge, and it's being defended massively. It is a level of support like none other. Just like 4,400 now is a level of resistance, mm -hmm. this 4,300 level is an amazing level of support. And if you see this, for, and now you can see we're trading, but just we're going to call it 4,300. If you break significantly below this 4,300 level today, you're going to see, in my estimation, and we're taping this at 1047 Central Time on Friday. So who knows how the, I don't know how the market's going to turn out, right? Mm -hmm. Danny doesn't, Don doesn't, Hunter doesn't, you don't at home. But if you break that level significantly today, it's going to trigger a reverse gamma school. And so people understand uh, GameStop, right? When GameStop and, and all the calls were being purchased and, it caused the market makers to have to cut, you know, to short, uh, to, they have to balance their book. And mm -hmm. to do that, you know, they sell you the call, which means they, it's a negative trade. Then they got to balance their books out, which means more stock buying to balance the books out. And that caused a gamma squeeze to the upside. And GameStop went from, you know, really low to really high in like a matter of days. So revert it now, what you're going to see is the opposite and it's because there's so much <laughs> there are so many puts here right here that if they trigger to the downside it's just it's going to be game stop in reverse it's the easiest way to look at it. Mm -hmm. this level is being defending see we're at 4300 right it is fascinating to see the game play out it's said in in plain english Please. there's lots of puts and people are putting their stocks to the market makers or whoever sold right. them the puts, so they're selling puts. Yes. So, like in stocks, when you have a a call, they've got to buy the stock to deliver the stock to you. That call that's a bullish yes. thing. If you're executing puts, that's a bearish thing. It makes right. the stocks go and, lower. And so, someone's going to say, "Well, Tim, how do I use this?" Well, in the vid in the Wednesday video, I covered. I did fib retracements with you. I actually did them on screen. There's things you can do to just meant you know like if. If you're super long or super short, like it's really hard to be super anything in this market. Don, <laughs> Don's 100% cash. And, and it's the smartest, you know, smart, you know, Don is extremely smart. And so, um, well, jury's still out on that, but. Wow, man, dude. <laughs> That's true. We're, we're, we're on the same team, dude. Yeah, yeah, okay. Sorry. That's right. There is, they say there is no I in team, but there's a, there's a hole in the, there's an A in the hole or the hole in the, I, 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 what? All right. Yeah. Yeah. There, I, I, if, <laughs> I forget how that phrase goes. Anyway. So there's a bunch of things you can do to just get set up market wise, get your mind wrapped around it. If, if, if you, you're so inclined technically to give you the clues and, and walk, walk the dog through this step by step. There's one clue on Thursday I want to show you that happened on Thursday um, that gave you a little hindsight. And I'm not going to uh, take, take too much time with this chart here. But the ADD on Thursday. The advanced decline. The advanced decline line. So, I, again, I don't use any one piece of information in a vacuum. I, I, I create a site. You want and, confirmation. Well, so the ADD opened up at plus like 1,200. And the ticks opened up at like plus uh, 12 or 1,300. And then uh, normally that's the type of fade the situation. And I was just watching the ADD and the ADD that kept going lower and lower and lower. And you're not going to get a sustained rally. You're not going to get a sustained move until you see the ADD start to march higher or lower. And so the ADD just kept coming off no matter what the market was doing. And that was a clue that this thing had no support underneath it. 
So now you take where Wolf we'll, we'll, we'll is the exact opposite true today. Well, the ADD actually opened up here around minus, uh, just above minus 1600. You're struggling right now. Like th this ADD isn't bullish. It doesn't mean it can't, it can't turn around, turn around, but ADD is so crucial here. You're seeing, uh, if you combine it with the ticks, you're, you're seeing the lack of demand. Yeah. Yeah. That's really <laughs> what you're seeing. That's a great way to put it. And this, in this book call ratio, just to put a button on this and then we'll move on here. This book call ratio isn't really bearish, meaning it's not, you're not, you're not seeing extreme pessimism in the market right now. What, and I just want to, I want to, I want to bracket this. There was, and there was some shelling on a nuclear plan in some news last night that you know turned out to be a little over the top, right? Um, and and thank God it was a little, you know, it's not, it's not true. Like it's not the things that people were saying was happening on the ground. But this, 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 this put call ratio does not, ex, does not show you extreme bearishness. And if it did show you extreme bearishness. And you got some positive ticks, and you saw the ADD reverse higher. You could get a short squeeze, right. a short covering rally. Could be short term bullish. Yeah. Right now, the market, the put call ratio has actually come off from the highs where it opened up, and um, the ten day moving average is just sitting like at 0.87. I want to see the ten day moving average 0.9 or higher. I want to see extreme pessimism, and then you can get those rip snot roaring rallies to the upside like we've seen. That we that saw one last Thursday, and we saw one a couple of days ago as well, and so on on uh, Monday, I believe. And so anyway, hopefully that gives. Uh, now we're going to start getting a little more um, esoteric here, but hopefully that gives like actionable things that stock nerds, market lovers can do uh, to to march in and work on their charts over the weekend. And, but but in a nutshell, uh, right now you want to be defensive, yeah. until you get further, yeah, yeah. There's yeah information saying that it's. It's yeah. skewing toward bullishness. That this is there's nothing. Not, there's nothing no, bullish. Right. No, there's nothing bullish about this. So now, uh, what what is this all about? And it's easy to say it's about uh, the war in Ukraine. By the way, that it, it is partly that. But look at the dollar here. I'll show you YouTube. Um, or you know, can we get DXY? We can get DXY. DXY is easier. So this is a this chart is broken out. So you combine. Jay Powell, it's unprecedented, really. I can't remember a time, and Danny's been, I'm not, I'm not making a joke here, Danny's been watching this much longer than I have. I don't remember a time a Fed chair has come out ahead of the meeting and said, hey, we're just doing a quarter point. It's not up for debate. He did that in congressional testimony. Right, right. That was the big rally with the Jay The one-day rally. The one-day rally. Like, it, oh, 50, like a half a percent raise is off the table? You haven't even had the meeting, which, which by the way, doesn't that just neuter the Fed governors? Like, what is the point of being a Fed governor, a Fed pre a Fed head, right? If it, like the St. Louis Fed, the Kansas City Fed, the Philadelphia, like, like the voting members of the Fed were just neutered by the Fed chair. Their voices well, aren't heard. No, no, I, I get that. But more importantly, you know, when they come out intra meeting and make a bold statement like that, that's because they want maximum effect and they want to get catch people with their pants down so they get a bigger move. So they wanted a big, they wanted to try to put a floor into the market. Guess yeah. what? It lasted for a day and everybody yes. went, wait a minute, what do they see that we don't? Right. And it turned around and rolled back over. That's really, to me, the takeaway is he was trying to stimulate the market and it didn't work. So now you have a dollar that's going higher. And, I, and who knows if it's done here. If the, you have a dollar that's going higher, you have rates going up. And now let's talk about what happened with the jobs report. It's not the amount of jobs, right? It's, it's really, in my estimation. So we're building a side picture here. So we've got dollar higher, right? We have the Fed telling you already, hey, we're doing a quarter percent, okay? But they still think that we need to get a percent by the, by the time uh, July rolls around. Never right? happened. Well, you know, that's, that's an interesting thought. I went, I'm on record. I know, you've been on record. But look, saying that. So you, to understand what's happening here, why that Jay Powell is so far behind. This Fed is so far behind everything that's been happening. What's inflation costing the consumer? Now, remember, we have a high dollar, okay, and we have rising rates. Those are typically, oh, by the way, fuel, uh, that looks like, it, you know, the thought, it, oh, up over, gasoline, mm -hmm. up over 11 cents overnight. That's the biggest move ever. 
11 cents overnight is the biggest one night, one day move in uh, gasoline prices in this country. Okay. And, and you have this inflation that's, grow, that's growing so rampant. And let me quantify what, infl- what, what, inf- what inflation really is doing here. And so, uh, Zach, you can go to my screen. Thank you, my friend. And so inflation uh, is costing the average household $385 per month. Well, inflation is costing Americans the most in Utah and Mountain West on average 385 per month. Uh, families in Utah up $500 a month. And so, um, oh, here it is, excuse me. No, that's on average American households, not just the West. The West is $500 a month. The average for the uh, all 50 states, 51 for some politicians. <laughs> American households are paying 385 That That equates to just under $5,000 a month. I mean, a year. So when you're like, well, how much does this inflation really cost? Jim? Tell me, you're such a big talker. It's costing the average family upwards of $5,000 a year. $5,000 a year, a lot of money. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so there's a lot. There goes all that disposable income. That's exactly where I'm heading. Mm-hmm. XLY is not your friend. High multiple stocks here are not your friend. Consumer discretionary stocks are not your friend here. They're e- discretionary. When you start losing 5 k a year, for the average consumer, nothing is dis- discretionary goes out the door. That's the problem here. What's discretionary? No, oh, Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, all discretionary. There's going to be there's a huge problem building right now. There's a strong dollar, good we can buy more. Not if. The dollar isn't getting strong enough to, co- to compete against $5,000 a year. The dollar isn't getting strong enough, my friend, to compete against 11 cents overnight in gasoline. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit more about what really happened with the jobs report. It's a great jobs number. I'm going to take the other side of this and tell you that people are coming back to work because they're running out of money. Okay? <laughs> this is not a position of strength that people are coming back to the to the job market from, okay, or to. And I know that might sound humorous or or even stupid to somebody, but there's a lot of people that don't want to work. Remember, a couple months ago, we read the senior citizens are coming back to the workforce. That's not a good thing. They're coming back to the workforce because $5,000 a year is being eaten from their Social Security. Well, also, they cut off the monthly, the government well, stopped right. paying. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a given. Everyone knows that. But now, this is, this is the news. I think the biggest piece of news that's coming out of this jobs report is what I'm about to show you right here. It's wages. Wages didn't go up month over month. Well, that's interesting because Target announced they're going to start paying people uh, upwards of $24. They had their earnings report uh, recently targeted, Target. They're going to pay upwards of $24 an hour to get people to come to work. And, and we talk, we've lamented on Starbucks. And there's a bunch of places paying, Chipotle is one of the, they're paying a lot of money per hour here. Okay. Uh-huh. But this is the first month in a long time that wages didn't go up, Daniel. Now, they're up 5.1% year over year, okay? Inflation is 2% higher. And more if you, more if you include food and fuel, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Inflation is much, much more than what the wage gains are year over year. But the wage gains didn't go up. Okay, that's trouble. So you're, you're saying it's more structural and less transitory. <laughs> this is a big problem. That Maybe this is a one-month blip. But weren't we told inflation was just blip? Just like you said, inflation was transitory. Hey, in the Marvel movies, a blip lasted five years, man. <laughs> you like that, Zach? Gospel. Yes. Yes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of inflation course. might last five yeah. years. It might be the Marvel movie blip. The most reliable analogy. Yes. I love it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Working for me on the front. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got confidence in our politicians. They'll figure out a way to screw it up. And, and by the way. And hurt the economy, put us in a recession, and kill inflation. When you talk about our politicians, <laughs> yeah. there is a warmongering crowd that wants this world war to happen. Like, sweet Jesus. 
like just yesterday, I swear to you that I my first thought was like you know the reports were coming out on the nuclear re, you know on the nuclear reactor right, right. and and you've got I don't know what his name is the secretary of something in Ukraine saying this could be ten times worse than Chernobyl and it was damnation t- fire. Well, he's trying to get people to come to his aid. Sure, he's trying to start World War Mother Hump and Three, drag us into it. Maybe there's a Gulf of Tonkin event we can have. That's how Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's I'm some. I'm well aware. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe they, we can just go back to the Gulf of Tonkin here. I mean, holy heck. It was McNamara. So, look. How does all this inform your side picture? So, it's not, it, by the way, the jobs picture is backwards looking, okay? But the wage issue is a huge one. If you don't see wages, I mean, gosh almighty, what happens if wages go down? Well, then that tells you that there's a couple things you need to, I think, surmise from that. If wages, say the next, say uh, we get March, we just got, that was February's job report, reported the first week of March. Now, fast forward to the first week of April when we're looking at March. If wages go down or stay flat again, that means the market is being fed. The consumer, I don't want to say the consumer is in trouble because you're going to see the consumer has saved so much money from the pandemic. You're going to see a bunch of studies, a bunch of people doing this. It is my belief, me, that people are only coming back to the job market because they have to. If they wanted to come back to the job market, they would have done it last year. They would have done it in October, November, December. They're coming back to the job market because they have to. Older people are coming back to the job market, not because they want to, because they have to. Social Security, even with the biggest increase in that program's history, isn't going to keep up with inflation. They didn't make a $5,000 across the board average Social Security raise for the average American household. That's what inflation is costing. And by the way, that's a stagnant number. It doesn't account for all the fuel costs. This is the, we talked about it last week, the precursor to recession. Well, you know, the, the Fed couldn't figure out, Jay Powell's team couldn't figure out if it was gas, higher gas prices, did they really cause a recession? But no recession has started, has never started, hasn't been ignited, Daniel. You did that, ignited gasoline? Hasn't been ignited <laughs> without the specter of higher energy prices. And here we are. Wages aren't going up. The job market is accelerated. It's good that there's jobs to be had. There's 11 million jobs open, job openings. But this last piece, this, there's like all these economic studies, right? And they're not, I don't think they're leading. Like the leading, like I, like I think this is one of the most leading indicators you can look at to see if you should be buying stocks or a little cautionary. And it's not instantaneous. It catches up with you. And then we go to it. here. It's the, it's the consumer sentiment survey. If consumer sentiment is picking up, that is discretionary. That is, that is Amazon, that is Lowe's, that is Home Depot, that is people going out buying four-wheelers, they're buying an extra pickup truck, they're doing a bunch of other things. It's their mood, yes. Yes. This mood. Look at this. I only, Daniel, this number uh, is from January. January of 22, 67.2. What do you think the consumer sentiment is after a month of oil going through the roof and and almost, how do you start a nuclear war? I don't want your warheads. Bomb a nuclear plant. And an almost nuclear war with Russia and Ukraine. How do you think consumer sentiment is trending for the month of February? Down. Yeah. And so that's going to put even more pressure on high multiple stock. It's going to put even more pressure. People are cheering. They're cheering. Well, I think that's getting baked in right now. Yeah. yeah. They're cheering like Nordstrom's had a good quarter. Uh, Gap had a great quarter. They're backwards looking people. They, they, they're cheering a Nordstrom's quarter that was, that was from the holiday. They're cheering a Gap quarter that was from the holidays. I'm glad that people have money to spend on that, on that stuff and go to stores, but th- that's not now. If you want to see that, but does that, does that mean you're bearish? No, it means you're cautious. Does that mean you go short? It means you're cautious. There's a lot of issues right here. Turkish inflation. Not that Turkey is the uh, is the, uh, the 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 standard bearer for all. Things. No, not at all. They've got lots of problems. They got lots of problems, and inflation is one of them. They got ninety nine problems, and inflation is one. Um, 
Look at that. I, when I make Zach laugh, that that's that's a who's Look, saying I'm just I'm just looking for thumbnail content. I, I, right? I think I, I think 99 percent of their problems is yeah. inflation. I, that's, I, is I, that, who's, you guys lose me in the sauce sometimes. Every once in a while, Tim comes up for air with a pop culture reference that's yeah. so obscure. Who's so saying that the song? Wall. Jay Z, Jay Z, Jay Z, ninety nine problems. Yeah, ninety nine. Inflation is not one. That's the. Can name you do that on the thumbnail? I don't know. You know, I'm gonna go look and let me send that. Send that to the boys in the lab. Yeah, you know, the you know what? Department. Let's see if we can make it make sense. These yeah. are like word puzzles. A by the bit. way, <laughs> uh, just just a quick update. A break from the seriousness here. Uh, the Buzzer Network on uh, Amazon IMDb shows classic. Yeah. So concentration use. I didn't know this. Concentration was a game uh, in the eighties. Like, I think it was earlier too. But they show the uh, classic concentration from the 1980s. Concentration. And uh, it's it's word pictures. And that's what we've kind of been doing with, uh, I was watching some of this Feeding Graham the other night, like it too. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what Zach's doing. Like they put a picture of a ham or, or no, like uh, turkey. So yeah. you can put a picture of a turkey. And then I don't know what you do for rising costs, like a dollar going up. You know, maybe a gasoline price or a Joe Biden sticker. Oh, I did that. Yeah, that's a good Something brand. like that. Right, yeah. yeah. And then, like, we could put the side picture together and Perfect. do that for the thumbnail. Yeah. And then every week, our viewers should then go to our YouTube channel. Rate, like, and subscribe, by the way. Uh, and what they could do is see if they could put the side picture together about what the show is about. There you go. I mean, that's really the thumbnail is fundamentally a clue. You're right. Yeah, it's a yeah. clue. It's a game within a, a game. While you're thinking of this. Yeah. yeah you're not uh, The wrong. thumbnail should be. I'm, I see when I get Hunter to check out, too. I like that. It, a, a game. <laughs> Within the game. Yeah. Right. And I think that's how we should drive the thumbnail from now on. That's marketing. That's what I said. I think he's on to something, Dan. <laughs> Had that thought yeah. at 2.10 in the morning. <laughs> I think he's right. Yeah. By God. That's what I'm saying. Tim, Tim's best ideas are at 2.10 <laughs> in the that's morning. Right. Holding Graham, he's milk drunk, and I'm thinking, you know what? I'm watching this concentration thinking, this is what Zach does for us. That's right. Man. Yeah, this makes sense. So look, um, Turkish, Turkish, oh, by the Turkish inflation, 54%. It's turkey. We zip in, we zip out. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, uh, spies like us. Is that no? Is that what is that? No, that was that was uh, stripes. That's Bill stripes. Murray. It's Yugoslavia. We zip in, we zip out. That was that was a great movie. <laughs> so that was pre Berlin Wall uh, falling for all the uh, so look, all the youngsters. Look, that's all bearishness, right? And so you can have these big. I mean, you've seen them. These monster rallies off the bottom. And look, 4,300 is the gateway. I don't even know where we're trading at right now. SPX, 4,296. So futures at 4,294. Uh, Not too much of a difference. They're just one, one or two points away there. You see 4,300 break decisively. And they probed the lobes this morning. Uh, but if you see it break decisively, you're, gonna, you're probably going to see a flush, a whoosh low. And um, going into the weekend, and I think it's real dangerous talk. But who's going to want to own stocks going into the weekend? That, that's 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 not helpful. Maybe people want to cover their stock. Like you, you think like maybe people want to just cover their short going into the weekend. They don't want to wake up to uh, peace, peace in our time. By the way, that's boy that Neville Chamberlain didn't age well, did he? <laughs> Talk about tweets that didn't age well. If if Twitter existed in thirty nine, is that thirty nine with Neville Chamberlain? <laughs> peace in our time. This calculation, which by the way. Might be happening. Some miscalculations might be happening now. Anyway, so look, uh, I mentioned at the top of the show uh, that uh, Don is in cash, and uh, Don Don is in cash for a lot of reasons. I'll let Don speak. For him. He's been in cash for a while with a couple with a couple uh, opportunities uh, taken, but with, uh, with Don has a uh, phrase. I think it's a T-shirt. Nothing happens uh, good below the two hundred day, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing good happens. That is it. Yeah, so that is a T-shirt, and it, and and and, and a T-shirt is just actually nothing good happens below the two hundred day with an arrow pointing down. And actually, on the front, it's like a teenager out after midnight. Yes, <laughs> no, the, no, that's that's it. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same equivalency. And so I think these two topics, although separate, they do apply together. Yep. Uh, when you talk about the two hundred day, what's taking place in the market right now? and wash sales. And so uh, with that, I want uh, Don and Danny to address those two, which by the way, then gets into the emails that you've been receiving as well. Yeah. So uh, since we're, since you were talking about the markets, let's do the, the nothing good happens under the 21, 200 day moving average okay. first. So I got a couple of emails from clients and we want to be fully trained. And the client says, nothing good happens under the 200 day moving average in quotes, meaning Don says that. 
And he says, you know, we've also said the winds that are back when the 21 exponential is above the 50 day simple and both are above the 200 day. And so, and then he said, it's hard to make money in this choppy market. He's correct about that. It is absolutely hard. This is the hard part of the market. Sometimes the market's easy to make money. Everything lines up and sometimes it's hard. Then another guy emailed another client and he's being a little tongue in cheek. He's, he's a great guy. He's a doctor. Anyway, he said, somebody's rules aren't working because he was asking because we got in and then two days later, we got out three days later. And so my response to him was, we never got over 45% invested, but I wanted you to understand our processes. Okay. We got stretched on 224. We got stretched 9.8, basically 10% below the 50 day moving average. And when that happens, we normally get a snapback reversal rally with high probabilities of a short term bottom. But because we're still under the 200 day, we only got partially invested. We didn't go all in. And we had a, a few gains and a few, a few small gains and a few small losses that offset each other. Now, this is a member, this is a couple, mm -hmm. three days ago. And this is when the, the big rally day you were talking about, Tim. Mm -hmm. I said, today the markets were up modestly. And then this is the, the day after we went back into cash because the trade didn't work out. I said, Fed Chairman Powell announced he would only raise rates a quarter point versus uh, uh, half a point. And so the markets rallied hard. I said, even with today's market gains, while we're flat, you know, Grotection is up beating the S&P 260 basis point, 2.6%. And this is of real time at 1 p.m. So it might be different. And I said, this is a very fast moving, difficult market, but I say our rules are working as, as designed. And even with the exposure, uh, we're, we're doing very well. Now, since that, we've spread even further because the markets have gone down for another two days hard mm -hmm. and we're, we're just sitting even. Now, I love Don's answer because Don's like a surgeon, just cuts in, just boom. Don says, we've been selling all day as our stops are hit. Net, net, we're right where we were before we re-engaged last week. <laughs> so, so with that, Don, I want you kind of to explain the thinking of, you know, we were defensive, we took our shot, then it didn't work out, and so we adjusted. So kind of explain the week from 224 on what happened. Sure. The the big the, we have rules that you can, that you can look at as being the strategy, and then there are some exceptions to those rules that you can think about as being tactical. Uh, an, an example of strategy is we really want to avoid market exposure when we're under the two hundred day moving average, as you mentioned. Another one is we really want to maximize our market exposure when we're above an uptrending twenty one day moving average. An example of tactics would be, okay, we're under the 200 day moving average, but historically, when we get stretched 10% to the downside on the S&P 500, you're looking for a snapback and it's a very low, uh, it's a very favorable risk reward situation to, to take a shot. Uh, sometimes those washouts put in the lows. It happened on 124, it happened again on 224, those lows held for weeks. The 124 lows held for weeks. So far, it's been a week and a half uh, that the 224 low has held. So from a tactical approach, we take a shot. Now, taking a shot isn't risk-free. Uh, when we get stopped out, we've got our 9% our rule, which is at a, if we're 8% off of our high in our accounts, we that's a signal. And we kind of gauge all of our stops so that we're exiting between 8 and 9% out. But re-engaging doesn't mean we're not going to go more than 9% lower because there, there is a little bit of a risk attached to it. And the risk is limited to 1% to 2% on the downside. So every time we take a position, our, we're targeting 0.2% to the downside as our maximum loss. So that means we can take five positions. Of the total portfolio. Get, of the total portfolio, right. we can take five positions. If we get stopped on all of them, we're only going to lose 1%. That's the market telling us that it's not the time to get back in. So after we took the shot, we went up about 1.2% off of the lows. At that point, we're moving our stops higher so that when we're up 1.2% gain with the various positions that we're taking, we want to start moving our stops up so that we really don't go negative if the market reverses. And that's what happened. The market ran into resistance. We took some profits there uh, on, on some things. 
uh, and then some some other positions just reversed and didn't work out. And as those stops got hit, we ended up down 0.1% from where we started. So uh, the tactics made money for a couple of days. We ran into resistance. The market ba uh, bears overwhelmed the bulls again. Our stops got hit. We went back to even where we took the shot in the first place. So um, that's that's kind of a summary of the approach that you take when you're trying to get back in the market. You want to finance your risk with your gains. So the more you make while you're under your strategic plan to be um, avoiding stocks under the 200 day moving average, that's your strategy. The tactic is we have to get back in at uh, certain points with different indicators that we have that show that there's a low risk to reward situation and it's worth re-engaging. Uh, and then um, as you gain, you finance your risk to put more positions on, you move up your stops so that if they turn against you, you basically get out with minimal damage. And that's pretty much what happened. We got stopped out on 3-1 um, on Tuesday and then watched the market go higher into resistance and then reverse the last two days. So um, right now, risk reward is really nowhere to be found. We're, we're floundering uh, under the declining 21, the declining 50. Uh, the, the indices are the indices, are the indices. Yes. Uh, some leading stocks that showed some promise have reversed and have been taken off of the leaders list. The 21 over 21 list will probably have between seven and 10 uh, stocks exiting it when I update it later this week. And that's the information that's the market telling us um, risk you, off. you're not in a favor. You're not in a favorable situation. So, yeah, risk off, basically. So that's okay. that's kind of the entry and exit process that we went through reengaging and then unengaging when uh, the rally just didn't work. OK, so so I got so I got a follow up email when I answered. I gave the, the long answer that I read you that I responded back to the doc. And he, he basically said, thank you for your answer. I appreciate it. I am not unhappy being invested in this market. It was a reflex responding to a 48 hour buy and sell. I know you understand. Thanks for, you know, the, the, the clarification. I had another guy, uh, another client email and say, uh, grateful to be in cash. Here's the point, though. You know, with Revere, you're getting, you're getting direct access to the money managers and the people running money. At, at your place, your brokerage house. Your strip, strip mall advisor yeah, com. Your quote advisor, your asset gather, they, to you, they call them the relationship manager, but behind your back when you walk out, they, he, they call him the asset gatherer. He's farming you out to a bunch of mutual funds. And, and you, you, you say, uh, you just got to stay, you know, you, you hear it, you say, uh, are you just, you're, you're in it for the long haul or just stay the course. Don't do anything. They're not taking any action. And, and, and the reason these, uh, they put them in mutual funds is you can't see all the action. So you don't know. And then all of a sudden you get your month end statement and you see this big decline. That's the problem. It's not, they're not actively engaging. So that was the, that was the, the kind of the synopsis of what happened the last couple of weeks. Uh, now I'm going to move on to the wash sales. Can yeah, I do, do it? Yeah. Okay. So, so last year, so, and, and I'll let Don explain in a minute how you get wash sales, how, because leading stocks, the best of the best, you kind of take a position and then something happens, whether it's stock related, specific stock related, or whether it's because the whole market starts to sell off, you may have to sell. And if it's kind of short term, it's a big whoosh down and it starts to rally again. Those leading stocks are still going to be the leading stocks a lot of times. So you're going to buy those back within 31 days. And now all of a sudden you've created a wash sale. So with that backdrop, I've got a client that emailed me and says, if one buys a stock and sells the same stock in the wash sale window, the 31 days, the loss is disallowed. If the same stock is repurchased, the cost basis uh, is adjusted to include the amount of loss. I'll get to that in a minute. If no replacement is purchased, the loss is disallowed forever. Okay. That's a misstatement because if the, if you didn't buy that stock back, no loss, uh, uh, no, uh, wash sale was created anyway. Okay. So that's the first question he has. 
The second is, in an IRA account, wash sales are permanently disallowed. How do wash sales impact investment results? He's talking about an IRA. Okay, my answer. Wash sales are never permanent because you have to repurchase the exact same stock ETF to create a wash sale. You must purchase the replacement and it has to be the same security. The loss is added to the second repurchase. So in effect, it nets the first loss with the second gain or loss. So if the second one's a gain, it's a it's it's a less of a gain because you use that first wash. You cannot just offset the gain. The only thing you can't do with a wash sale is you can't use that loss to offset another stock and you must wait to sell that exact same stock and net those two. So it simply defers. If you never sell it, if you never sell it, then you don't get to claim the wash from the first buy. Well, yeah. In other but, words, if right. you bought, yeah. if you yeah, hold if you, something for years, that wash will be. You're never going to get to claim it until you until you, you sell, sell it. Right. The repurchase. Right. right. Now, okay. So I said performance is unaffected uh, in IRAs because capital gains are not taxable. It's completely irrelevant. So so so. Uh, IRAs are only taxed when you take distributions out as ordinary income. Capital gains have no effect. Okay, now, regarding tax, because he didn't ask this question, but I wanted to clarify. Regarding taxable accounts, unused wash sales uh, would affect net performance by the uh, slightly higher capital gains taxes you paid. Usually that difference will be marginable, marginable, uh, marginal for wash sales not used up. However, um, um, if they're all used up, it's irrelevant on performance. Performance is exactly the same because you didn't have to pay any additional tax. So, but that's why it's always important to check the end of the year to see if you've got any wash sales that you may want to unwind to be able to have them. It may be important. It may not at the end of the year. Now, the only thing I dislike is the fact that brokerage firms show up the aggregate wash sales for the year and they don't remove them when they're used up, even though the gain loss category is accurate. Um, so what I'm saying is like to the client, I'm saying, so the wash sales you have is zero because we use those all up. We, we closed out the second position and it had no effect to us. But we and, didn't do it until, 20, until 2022. So it was not allowed in 2021, but the, the wash sale will, you'll be able to take the loss or the gain from that. Now, all of our wash sales, all of our wash sales were used up. There might be one security that it wasn't, but we used most of them up in 2021. So those, those there was are, one that carried over to 2022. One that carried over to 2022. Right. But again, that's only one position. Our position sizes are very, very small, you know, four to 5% of the total portfolio value. So you're talking about a very marginal difference, but once you unwind that, then the net effect is the same. But here is the, and here's even a broader point. You always want to do tax planning by the end of the year, and you don't want to do it in, in it, you know, around Christmas or December 20th or 28th, because everybody goes and looks and sees what stocks didn't do well, and they, so it accelerates the losses. They get the stocks that didn't do well that year will do even worse toward the end of the year normally. So if you're going to do your, uh, tax harvesting or your tax planning, you want to do that at the end of the November or early December. But you always want to do uh, loss harvesting because you'll end up paying a lot less capital gains than you think you will in taxable accounts. Everybody's always so worried about paying capital gains. And there's two ways you can either, you know, give it back to the market and not control your own destiny or pay some tax and control your own destiny and control the portfolio fluctuations, the downside risk better. But here's the thing. If you actually book losses, as long as they're material, you don't have to book a hundred dollar loss, but, but if you've got a couple thousand dollar loss, even if you like that stock and you think it looks good, if I book that loss by the year end, I know I'm going to get to use that loss against the gain. It's at, it's, it's, but it, it, and, and, and more importantly, I can always buy that same stock after 31 days, or I could b b sell M Pfizer and buy Merck, or you know, I can do a, a swap immediately. If I'm really bullish on that sector, I can find another stock that moves just like that. 
because the only reason I wouldn't book a material loss, and this is really important for the listener to understand, the only reason I wouldn't book a material loss is if I thought that stock was going to go up at least 15%, the long-term capital gains rate, in 31 days. Guess what, folks? I'm not that good. We do not consistently buy stocks that go up 15% in a month, and nobody does. So you know that you're going to get to use that. So maybe one out of 40 stocks will pop, and you said, man, I wish I hadn't booked that. But, but you will absolutely pay less in taxes over time. And here's the thing, even in a very tough stock market year where you don't necessarily have a whole lot of capital gains, you still want to go book losses at the end of the year to stack them up for next year so that when you do have a big year like 2020 or 2021 or you know whatever, you can offset those uh, gains later. So if you have a net loss at the end of the year, you can offset $3,000 against ordinary income and you can carry the rest forward for future gains. So you always want to do tax planning. And I know this is a confusing topic, so if anybody's got any questions, they can reach out and call me or email me at dan at revereasset.com and I'll explain the rules to you. But you shouldn't not sell for fear of paying taxes. That is the wrong reason not to sell a stock. The easiest thing to do, 855-732-5932. 855 real wealth. Yeah, give give a holler. Um, and look, I, you're talking right to America's fiduciary. Like, especially if you have questions on wash sales, is it, it is complicated after a while, and you can talk yourself into a circle. Um, but I think the more important topic that people call you about, it, we don't sell it, uh, but we but Danny's an expert in it, and that's uh, life insurance. And you want to have that discussion about your needs or how to act on your insurances that you have well before you are using them right and so uh having that discussion whether you're a client or not we do all the life planning and stuff for our clients uh free of charge but even if you're not a client danny will always talk to you and guide you because that's who we are as people there you go yep that's who we are as people People who need people okay stop that that won't (laughs) that 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 won't be who sang that by the way do you know not you and so um yeah yeah, somebody else. There's somebody else that is not named, <laughs> not named Dan Stewart. So with that, let's go to Hunter, Mister Mister Alabama, uh, Hunter Mazinga. Yeah, man. Yeah. What you I, got? I, so I really, I'm going to do a little bit of a different approach today. So a lot of the stuff, uh, as far as what's strong, what's in uptrends, there's not a ton of it, right? The markets, as we've illustrated here on the show with the charts, are not looking the best right now. And Tim, you don't have to pull up these. Uh, any tickers necessarily, but I'm just going to list these off uh, because we've talked about them both in my videos on previous podcasts, but just quickly here, oil, steel, copper, obviously other commodities, uh, the Kim Ag Group, which is your mosaics, your nutrients, your CFs, those continue to move higher along with your shippers. Um, so these areas are still strong. They have just gotten very extended over the course of the last week, almost in a sense, uh, very vertical over the last three to five days. Some of those have started to consolidate, but I just wanted to point that out. We don't have to pull them all up. We've also seen cybersecurity and defense stocks have a very vertical reaction over the last week or so for obvious reasons, given what's going on around the world. So with that being said, Tim, can you pull up a monthly chart? Do you have that capability yep, uh, for QQQ? Let's do it. And I'm not sure what moving averages you have there um, on QQQ. Five, eight, but, one, thirty-four. Okay, cool. So I just want to point this out very quickly. Uh, and in MarketSmith, it is the default to have the 10 and 20 month moving averages uh, on your charts when you pull up a, a monthly, just in the event anyone is looking on that platform. But one I want to point out is that 20 month is basically right where we are right now, more or less right at 338. So into today, that was the low for the week and the low for the month. Obviously, we lost that after hours yesterday with the gap down uh, right to around 335 on the queues. But that 338 level also corresponds to a FIB. So this is a really big spot where we're battling right here. Just like you mentioned, the S&P 500 is battling for 4,300. Mm-hmm. The queues are battling for 338 slash 340. Um, so a really big spot here on the queues if they lose this. They'll go back under that moving average. 
um, as well. So I just wanted to point that out. We don't talk about monthly charts or monthly moving averages all that much, um, but it is a key level. So I wanted to highlight that very quickly. And then Tim, if you can pull up Micron, MU, you can pull up a daily or like a 15 minute, it really doesn't matter. Um, and really all I wanna illustrate here is this is a microcosm of what the market has been like this week. Um, Micron has had wild swings both to the upside and the downside. So Tim, what, what is the, does that go back basically to about Monday there? Yeah, more or yeah, less. Let me show you. So, so we came Monday. into the week. Yep. So we had basically up 7%, down 5%. You know, just, this is the market recently is we've had just violent swings up and down day to day. You know, you, your long positions aren't working today. And so you close them out and then tomorrow the market's up. So it's been very similar to what you see here with Micron, just violent swings up and down, very dangerous for lack of a better term. Uh, just a few days ago, Micron looked like one of the top leading stocks in the market, you know, within striking distance of all time highs, uh, very close to a potential breakout. And then today you're 15% lower in a matter of two days, right? So it's, I just wanted to show this and I know maybe it's not the best visual representation, but this it has been this way for the market over the course of this week, extremely choppy, very spiky swings based on news driven volatility uh, coming from overseas. But it's just a dangerous place to be right now. And there's no way uh, of getting around that. So uh, I know that's not the normal way I go about my segment, but I just wanted to all look right. at things a little bit differently here. So that's all I got today, man. No problem. Did you want to say something? Well, I was going to say, I, I, I don't know if people realize this, uh, probably our, our stock nerds do, but but a lot of the big behemoth tech, tech bellwethers are just on average down about 15 to 18% um, year to date. But the high flyers, the, the high PE, high growth names, a lot of those are down 40, 50%, and some are even down 60 or 70. So you, you really got to be careful. And, and you know, going back to what we talked about earlier with the active management, obviously with the geopolitical stuff, um, emerging markets are just getting taken to the woodshed. What is I mean, the they're, they're, I mean, and, and, and you got hints on your charts weeks ago, if not months ago, that you should be out of emerging markets. And if you've got that passive pie chart, that, that modern portfolio theory pie chart thing, depending on your age, the younger you are, the more emerging markets you got, the older you are, the less you have, but that stuff should have been sold long ago. Look at this. Ugh. Direction. I don't. They don't even make this anymore. Uh, the two X Russell. I mean, uh, Russell. Russell. Two mm -hmm. X Russian uh, bull. Oh, they pulled it. Yeah, they, they pulled. They closed it. Yeah. it down. But even on the stay chart, this reminds. But me even of, the single Russian ETFs are not trading anymore. They stopped yeah, BlackRock. Stopped. Yeah. Oh, BlackRock. Um, look at this, man. Just this is the this is the old uh, luck and coffee chart. Luck and coffee gets too close as the market gets tough. We sell it. And then it went from like 40 or 38 to four from 40 down to nothing. Right. Yeah. But look at, look at that chart there. So you see, you know, way back there, it broke the uh, two closes below the 21 exponential. Yeah. Then it broke the 50, but then the real real tell oh, yeah. is look at the negative slope of all those moving averages. They're not horizontal. They're not slightly negative. I mean, that's gotta be, well, what a 50, 45, 50, 60 degree angle downward. But look at, look at, to the point earlier to circle back. Nothing good happens under the 200 day. Look at what happens. That's the gold line on my chart. Look at the acceleration in losses once you break the 200 day. Yeah. That, that, that illustrates uh, the point we're trying to make here. And so, uh, boy, what it, it's all chatter like people like, is this the time to buy? <laughs> no, this is not time to buy Russian stock. Because you don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. It, like you their stock market, I don't think it's still open. They closed I, I it. Think, uh, I don't Tim, think I got a, I got an interest. I saw a headline yesterday that said Russian investment analyst uh, drinks on live TV and yeah. bids stock market farewell. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Yeah. So, I mean, they're yeah. just like giving up. I mean, they, if, I mean, they closed their market. They have to. I mean, look at it. They, yeah. they, they said uh, they, they had a create on Sunday night or Monday morning an artificial well, the Western, level for the, the ruble. And the Western world has closed all access to the market. They're mar the Russian markets. They've shut. They said we're not buying anything. Except You're on your except own. Except oil. Except yeah, we'll buy your oil. <laughs> Shell. Shell just well, bought. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Shell just bought uh, like all those uh, a bunch of those tankers that are sitting. I think it's like six to nine tankers mm -hmm. full of oil, Russian oil that nobody would take. Shell took them. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure 
Shell just took them at a twenty-eight dollar a barrel discount. So there is a price. Yeah, Apparently, in the middle of a everything's war. for sure. sale yeah, for yeah. a price. Why Everything. not? Yeah, I, I, someone might want to. I, I read that on a headline uh, as we were doing the show. So if, if I'm wrong, apologies. But it looks like Shell. Remember that next time I'm gassing up. Shell, huh? R- yeah. RSX. The, <laughs> All right. The uh, the one time Russia ETF RSX. Is yes. Still trading. Oh, it is. What I'm looking at, but it's it's only uh, eighty. It's only ninety percent. It's gone from thirty three to five dollars and sixty cents. That's nothing. So it's only like uh, you know, yeah, just a bit outside. Off the yeah, a bit but if you still have that, uh, get out. I, I don't know how they're pricing this. I don't really I'll have to. I don't based know what on the holdings what? are. Yeah, like what's based... left in here. Yeah. By the way, you'll It'd have I, to be ADRs. We haven't seen it, and I haven't seen anyone else doing the work on it. But uh, there was when um, when uh, Puerto Rican bonds were having trouble about three or four years ago. Um, we did the work and found out a bunch of states. Had their muni bond yeah, funds yeah. had the, the, like Puerto Rican pots, and you would think the Pennsylvania <laughs> bond fund would have Pennsylvania bonds, North Carolina bond fund, North Carolina. No, no, they had bond funds from. Uh, I didn't know Puerto Rico was part of North Carolina. It's it's the southern part, and so um, it'll be interesting to see, uh, and it'll come out in the wash who owns all these assets, and all, and and all the talk of we're selling our interest in X Y Z of Russia, and and there's just no buyer. Yeah. You haven't sold anything. Like nothing has been transacted except this oil potentially. Like there's no buyers for all these different assets. And that's the problem. Like when can the Russian market open back up? When can the bond market open back up? When can their stock market open back up? And then I think you'll see the ramifications. Uh, but they, they just, it's, it's not a loss till you take it, right? right. So we just <laughs> close it. So. But that's but, but by the way, people think we have a free market here. But listen, they'll just shut it down. And you get a little you get a little taste of that uh, every now and then when they put the circuit breakers in. Uh, you go limit down. That's mm-hmm. that's a little taste mm-hmm. of the overlord of control. Right. And you know it's not a free market. It's a controlled market. Mm-hmm. That or or in that case, it's just a closed market. So, Don, what do you got this weekend, man, on the 21 over 21? By the way, you find all of our videos, everything that we talk about, right here at ReverAsset.com. Um, if I went off the screen, I did not mean to. Uh, ReverAsset.com, Daily Market Insight. Want to watch just the videos of the podcast right here. Want this delivered to your inbox. We don't send you anything else but five videos a week and a podcast on Saturday morning. There's never, ever, we don't spam anything. That's just not our business. Um, any questions, just hit the contact us button. You go to Revere 855 Real Wealth or all those addresses right there. Don, what do you got this weekend? Yeah, there'll be quite a few changes to the to the 2121 list. And as I mentioned earlier, that's just one of the signals that we use to uh, gauge the overall health of the market based on what are the leading stocks doing. In addition to the um, sectors that Hunter mentioned before, I want to add cybersecurity is holding up very well. The big three in there are Checkpoint, CHKP, Fortinet, FTNT, and Palo Alto, PANW, all still with constructive charts. Uh, Possibly pulling back into some viable uh, areas should the market right itself. Always always want to keep your watch list up to date with what's working. Okay. Uh, Is that it? Or do you have anything else? That's it. All right. Uh, listen now, Daniel. I've got a very important one last thing. Do not do that elongated, nonsensical close that you do every freaking week. I just need it concise. I need you to get it out to the people. We'll see you next week. How's that? <laughs> that, 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 that really works. concise. I thought wow. I'd throw him yeah. for a loop. I, sorry, I had to. He always, he always tells me to do the shortened version, yeah, so yeah. I thought I'd. Throw them for a loop this I'll time. That yeah. works. Not bad. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right, folks. Listen, if you like what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a neighbor, send them to revereasset.com. We won't spam them or reach out to them or hassle them in any way. It's up to them to reach out to us and tell us they'd like a portfolio com- a complimentary portfolio review. Or if they just have some questions or they like a topic they want us to s- discuss on air, you can email any of us at dan at revereasset.com, D- Tim, Don, or uh, hunter at revereasset.com. If you've got any account maintenance, email Merrill at revereasset.com. And you can always call us old school 
at 855 Real Wealth. All right, we've been talking about it for weeks. Uh, the, new, the new website will be unveiled on Monday. And so Ooh. let's show folks, give them a quick tour. This is on a uh, back channel server. Um, so you'll still go to revereasset.com. That's it's, not going to change. Some real black hat stuff we're looking at here. Yeah, this yeah. is just a back Dark this web, is, can't see. Special <laughs> ops. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Can't, this can't is, see it. Yeah, CIA Look, can't uh, see this Nothing's stuff. really changed here in terms of how you access stuff. I'll show you where you can find it. But there's a little uh, information you can read and click through and uh, take a gander at. But there's a couple ways to access the videos. And it's the information that we want to make sure people have access to. Yeah. We understand that some people don't want to subscribe because they, they the world is a spammy well, world. Well, they think we're going to, yeah. And we don't. We're, we understand we're, the different, we're different here. So we do our videos right here, uh, our podcasts are right here. There's one way to get them. Or you can just go here to Tomorrow's Insights. Click that link. All of our videos are housed there. Um, I got to pull over last night's videos. And I love stuff. the design. Very contemporary, oh, fellas. There you yeah, go. Yes. So sharp. you'll just click a video, uh, watch video, and then you click it, and then, of course, it comes up, and then you can play it right in the uh, the web player here. Uh, this plays just like normal, just like the old website does. If you want to subscribe, you can hit the subscribe button here, put your name, email, and submit it. If you want to send that link to people, all you do is hit copy the website link and tell them, hey, hit subscribe. And they can put their information in, want to contact us. You can see, look at all this. Look at all the handsome. Oh, no, this is a contact us page. I think we go to about a boot. Even the contact page looks good. Oh, you like that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. So here we go. Uh, grow your money with confidence. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the portfolios, their descriptions, the hybrid portfolios. And then you've got uh, the team here. Who's that good-looking guy? Wow. Yeah, who's that handsome-looking guy? <laughs> and there he comes He's around. in there twice. Hey. He's in there twice. <laughs> He was he's so good looking. They put him in there That's twice. Right. Yes. So good. They had to come back again for a second time. And so, look, you can subscribe. Most people, um, well, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people do have. You can do both Google Play and iTunes uh, on our website for the podcast. But there's a the click the quick link. Say that to set that up. Yeah, the quick link on iTunes. And then if you have trouble navigating the site, always, 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 never, never, ever uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Look, there's there's our email addresses right there. And then the one thing I realized that I want to put back on, I want to put real clearly uh, back on the website more prominently than just the contact page is uh, the phone number. I realized that as I was looking through here this morning. It's right there, but I liked it when it's underneath the uh, your name. Okay. Yeah. So a little, I don't like pe making people look around for information. Folks, we'll talk to you next week on Your Money.